Hello friends, welcome back to Aunt Debbie's Boutique. We're continuing with our holiday decor series and we are still making Halloween uh, decor. Today we're going to be making a Halloween centerpiece. All you're going to need is uh, some fabric scraps, some stuffing, polyfill stuffing, and either some twine or string or yarn with a big eyed needle. And what we're going to make are these is pumpkins. Now this pumpkin that I've already made is a six inch pumpkin. This one is an eight inch and today we're gonna to make a 10 inch. Uh, to make these pumpkins, you will make whatever size you want like we're going to make the 10 inch, it's going to be 10 inches wide and twice as long, so 20 inches long. So just use your scraps and whatever rectangular size, you can make them um, as big or little as you want. And if you want them a little bit fatter and squattier, you could make them a little bit wider than twice as half, uh, twice as much as the width, or if you wanted them taller, you could make them a little taller than, than half the uh, width, half the length. So uh, just use what you have. I have to warn you that there is some hand sewing in today's project. And I try to stay away from very much hand sewing because so many people don't like to do it. Uh, I don't mind it, but a lot of people do. So, okay, the first thing we're going to do is take our fabric right sides together and we're just going to make one quarter inch seam down the side. Now that we've sewn our seam, I want to iron it open before I turn it right side out. Now this is not absolutely necessary, but I like to do it because it makes your seam less notice noticeable. And I'm kind of an ironing fanatic when it comes to sewing, so. Okay, got that ironed open. Let's turn it right side out and here's where the hand sewing comes in you'll need a uh, needle and thread and I doubled my thread and knotted both ends together you could do this on the sewing machine we're just going to stitch some basting stitch and uh, you could do it on the sewing machine but I tried that and um, I had trouble with the thread breaking pretty easily. So you'd almost have to do a couple of rows to uh, keep it from breaking. So I just prefer doing it by hand with uh, a double thread like this. And we're just gonna start here at our seam. And we're going to make really big stitches about a quarter of an inch away. Now, when you get back to the beginning, I like to pull my knot out where I started and, and pull it from both sides and pull it just as tight as you can. And then tie a knot. 
Oh, I broke my thread. Tied it too tight. Okay, now then, to make sure it stays, we want to sew back and forth to have it cinched up really tight and it's not going to come apart. And then you can do whatever your favorite knot is. And trim your seam, your thread. Okay. Now this is going to be the bottom. The next thing we're going to do is take our polyfill stuffing and start stuffing our pumpkin. Now, the biggest secret to this is to overstuff. But I'm going to get it partially stuffed and then I'm going to stop and we're going to run another basting stitch around the top and then I'll come back and stuff it some more. So once again, I have a double threaded needle with a knot at the end tying both threads. And I'm just going to take really big stitches around the top here. Okay, before I start pulling it, I want to put a lot more stuffing in, just as much as we can get in there. That looks pretty good. Now, I'm going to pull it for both ends. That helps to make sure my knot doesn't accidentally slip through the fabric. And it also gives me something to tie with. This time I'm not going to tie it so tight that it breaks, I hope. Okay, now I'm going to start stitching it closed like we did the bottom. I've almost got this one too overstuffed. It doesn't, it's giving me kind of a hard time, but it'll make for a really fluffy fat pumpkin. Okay, when you get through, tie a knot. I'm gonna cut that little extra off there. Okay, now the next step is to take some yarn or twine. I think twine might work a little better. The yarn tends to fray when it's been laced through the pumpkin too many times. But this is what I had on hand, and it was kind of a purplish color that I thought, purplish black that I thought would go well with everything. 
Um, but what I'm going to do is start on the bottom and take a little stitch. This isn't a real sharp needle because it was meant for uh, well, things that didn't need to be sharp. It's more of a needle point type needle. And I'm going to tie a little knot. My only recommendation is that you get the biggest eye you can find. Okay, now then we're going to stab it in here and this is when not having a sharp needle <laughs> gives you trouble getting it through the first time or two is the hardest but you have to scrunch your pumpkin down until the needle comes out the other side and the bigger the pumpkin the harder it is to get it through that first time. And you want to make sure that you keep your yarn nice and straight because it'll knot up very easily on you. Okay, now we're going to go around and stick it back through again, and we're going to do this six to eight times around the pumpkin, and we want to pull it really, really tight. Okay, there's our first rib or whatever it's called. And we just continue on till we have all of them that we want. It does get easier to poke the needle through as long as it's going straight. As you get a couple of them on here because it gets squished better. Okay, I'm going to keep going around, and then I'll meet you back here. Now that I've got all my yarn on, and you can kind of adjust it as you see fit, I'm going to take a couple of stitches here on the top. Then I'm going to feed it back down. It's getting kind of crowded in there with all those threads. So find a good spot. And come out the back on the bottom side. Then I'm going to take my original string that was there when we first started it and tie it in a good knot too. And I'm going to clip both of them. Now at this point you can decide if, which is top and which is bottom. I kind of like that for the top. Okay, now we want to make our stem. I just drew this, and I'll have some drawn up in my pattern in my Etsy shop. I will have a pattern for all of the Halloween decor, all the little templates, all in one pattern. Uh, by the time uh, all these videos get up, I'm going to put right sides together and stitch around. Okay, I want to 
clip my corners and either clip around the curves or use pinking shears. Now we're going to turn it right side out. Then we want to put a little polyfill in this, but we don't want to overstuff this. It makes it difficult to sew on and it, it doesn't enhance the final product. Okay, I want to just not completely fill it up. And then we're going to hand stitch it in place. You just kind of push it down in there and stitch with my hand around the edge. Once again, I've got double thread knotted. And I'm going to take my first stitch inside my stem so my knot doesn't show. When you get to the end, just knot it your favorite way to knot something. And we will stick the needle through the inside so it comes out someplace far away. And then Clip it, and now the end of your thread is in side of your pumpkin. Now our pumpkins are done. Let's see what they look like on our table runner that we made last time. Now, isn't that a cute centerpiece for the center of your table? I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and that you will like and subscribe so I can bring more to you. We still have one more Halloween uh, decor we're going to do next time, and it's going to be a wall hanging. So please join me for that, and then we'll start on uh, Thanksgiving ones after that. Thank you for being here and for viewing these. I appreciate each and every one of you. And remember, whatever you do, do it to the glory of the Lord.